hands with Scott Wiley. I think the other thing that changed was we now have the perfect storm, right, of that the regulators, policymakers saying we need this because doctors are burnt out, nurses are burnt out, there's, there's shortages, there's burnout, right? We have the payers that are obviously enabling that. And we have consumers that are just used to this now, right? We have consumers that are like, why can't I text my doctor? Why can't I, you know, check in just like I do my airline visit? Why do I have to go in the office and be handed that same right. clipboard where you misspell my name and can't remember my date of birth correctly, right? So. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we're doing. At ClinCapture, we have our virtual data capture product, um, which is um, e-consent and uh, 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 electronic patient diaries and, and so forth. So, so, so the trials can be um, run remotely um, as, as well. So, so, so interestingly, the next, um, uh, the next step was to Salesforce. Is that right? Is that well, after you know, there AT&T? Were, there were, I've, I've been around the, the ecosystem. So I've done this rodeo on the provider side. I've done it on the EHR side for Greenway Health most immediately before coming to Salesforce. Oh, got it, got it, got it. And wh when did you start at Salesforce? I started at Salesforce about two years ago. Oh, years, okay. Like March 2020. Like, oh, yeah. right aligned with the beginning of it all. That's <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> quite a time. That's to right start about a the time job. I left San Francisco. So I lived in San Francisco for, um, for uh, 20 years. Wow. I moved to Las Vegas in, in 2020. And so Salesforce is like a, like a fixture, right, in, uh, Las, in, uh, in San Francisco, rather. How's, that, how's the structure work? There? So I, I rep I'm in market strategy. So oh, working across cool, the company, cool. supporting, again, everything as it relates to health and safety for our employees, as well as helping to support just our, our corporate brand, our, our corporate positioning in healthcare. We have a healthcare business. And so everything healthcare as it relates to Salesforce is, is, is the conversation that I'm having. Oh, wow. So you're not, not only are you handling um, – uh, uh, areas related to the product, but you're actually involved in internal health and, and, and yes. safety programs as well. Yes. Oh, interesting. Tell me a little bit more about that. How, sure. how does that work? So, so you know, I would say that my role evolved in the pandemic as companies evolved during the pandemic, and we looked to pivot and we looked to innovate and also to to lead through the pandemic. So, I was initially brought in to support the healthcare business, but very quickly, uh, you know, head of HR was like that Dr. G person, we need her over here. And so, and it's basically, we, ha we haven't looked back, right? Because health and safety, healthcare in general remains a priority for Salesforce. And we are looking to innovate and continue to lead in the space. And we did it throughout the whole pandemic and we're really proud of it. And now it's the next piece, which is, you know, healthcare is the issue of the decade. So what do big companies like us do about, about it, both for our own employees, as well as for our customers right. and, and for the, the healthcare industry, right? As we think about digital transformation and the challenges that payers, providers, life science companies still are facing. Got it, got it. And are there any plans for the product that um, that aren't top secret that you can discuss uh, <laughs> discuss with us here on Trials tonight? Well, look, we say that Salesforce Health is, it's our customer 360, it's our, our, our view essentially. And the idea is that we are powering the business of health. So whether it is the patient, the member for a payer, whoever it is that you need to be at the center of that, our platform can do that, right? And integrate all the different pieces of your business so that you get a full 360 view of whatever that might be, marketing, sales, IT, clinical. The idea is that we're giving you one lens in which to be able to, to power your business. And powering the business of healthcare is complicated. So we're you know really excited to be a part of digital transformation and health, and we've been doing it for over 20 years and we plan to go way, way above and beyond it and, and make our mark. Very nice, very nice. Now, Amanda, you're a, you're a power user of Salesforce. Sure you're in am. Salesforce every Yay. day. Yay, so, thank you, Amanda. Uh, so what, uh, what are some... Um, I might have to get your... You know, I brought you a hat and shirt, oh, by the way. Oh, nice, let me see, so let me see. So I brought oh, you some Salesforce swag. Very I wish nice. I, had a, I wish I had a uh, beanie now in retrospect. <laughs> but maybe I'll have to give one to Amanda. Maybe you're gonna have to fight for it. Oh yeah, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. We'll, we'll, we'll fight like two caged tigers. <laughs> So very, very good. So my bets on Amanda. <laughs> so I, every, all the, the odds are the odds are so anybody that bets on me is going to win a fortune because the odds are probably twenty to one, twenty to one against me. But uh, Amanda, working in clinical trials, mm -hmm. working in Salesforce, mm -hmm. um, any any ideas on on this uh, uh, transformative uh, process? Um, I mean, Salesforce, the way that it is, is meant to kind of serve, you know every industry. It's built to be something that's easy to use, but also extremely customizable, which is a phrase that I'm used to saying all the time on sales calls for our product, Captivate. 
Uh, the, you know, ease of use and customizability don't usually go hand in hand with software or it's a very difficult thing to accomplish. Um, you know, so I can plug Captivate all day, but really I think Salesforce is probably the number one example of, you know, or, or one of the best examples of a software that actually is both of those things. It is extremely customizable. So with the healthcare industry is, you know, we're very familiar with in clinical trials specifically, software has to be extremely customizable. Every single one of these trials are completely different and distinct. They need different workflows. They need different customizations, but it also at the end of the day has to be easy to use software. That's what people expect. And so I think, you know, there are definitely parts of Clin Capture that we've modeled after Salesforce. Um, wow, you know, just what a great in, compliment. Oh yeah, and as, as Scott mentioned, a day-to-day -day user of Salesforce is where all of my sales team's data lives. You know, it is nice to see uh, a company of this size kind of caring about this industry and, you know, trying to, um, I guess, better the health of, like you said, your internal employees and your customers. You got it. Wow, Amanda's hired. I need, to talk. I need your number. Man is hired. This is this is actually a, a trials with a Z, aka recruiting for Amanda McQueen. So, uh, but that interesting point about customization. Um, going back to EHR, I think that was one of the, uh, 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 the 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 big challenges in adoption of EHR. Correct me if I'm wrong. Every hospital sort of implementing a different version. Um, and it's, it's kind of hard. We find that with the clinical trial sites, right? The pharma companies, it's very easy to get everybody on the same page. And then they have the contract research organizations. When you get to the site level, folks kind of have ideas about how they want to, how they want to implement things. And, and is that, is that true for EHR as well? A lot of the differences between how hospitals run operations and it was difficult to kind of get that, that, um, integration from, from one hospital to another, even on the same software application. You know, you, you nailed it, right? The, the reality is that the EHR sort of revolution happened long before today's healthcare ecosystem. So a lot of these legacy systems are just not built for the healthcare of today, right? right? Where we have come, where, where COVID has accelerated so much of digital transformation, the EHRs are, are barely hanging on to being EHRs, right? Because every doctor out there, every nurse out there, they won't give a glowing recommendation like Amanda said, right? They'll say, I've got a workaround, Dr. G. Let me give you the workaround. When your technology is built and the end user has to come up with a workaround for everything they're actually trying to do, you have a problem, right? Yeah, workaround is a bad word. It's a bad <laughs> word you want to hear. 